as an EMT, was there ever a time when you had to deal with a very difficult patient? As I worked more and more in the ER, if I took more time and I didn't seem like I was rushing or if I slowed down the way I was talking, putting things in layman's term and explaining it to the patient or their family members, I found that interactions would go a lot smoother. I really liked that he turned a negative into a positive. I mean, overall, I think you brought it home. You did a good job. In the beginning, I was kind of like, oh man, this is going to be rough. Helping others is a calling. It's not a job. Three, two, one, snap. Hey guys, my name is Boris. This is... I'm Elijah. <laughs> He's still a first year PA student or a second year PA student? Second year. I need to change that tag. Oh <laughs> man, PAS2. Well. <laughs> All right, guys, ignore the PAS1. He's made it to PAS2, so he's like a real G now. <laughs> a little bit of experience now. <laughs> so those of you that have followed the channel for a little while, you've seen Elijah on and off the channel a bunch of times. Uh, he's a current student at Rutgers, second year PA student now, so he's killing it. Uh, kind of a fellow, like, low GPA, 2PA story, just like me. And so what we thought would be fun now that it's interview season, is we are going to do kind of a mini mock interview with myself and with Elijah. So he's going to ask me a question that I don't know he's going to ask me and vice versa. And we're going to try to just answer these the best that we can, give each other feedback, and hopefully that helps you guys prepare for your very own interviews. Uh, so am I going first? I can't remember. Uh, I think you're asking me the first couple questions. Okay. Oh, man, I want to ask like the most basic one ever, like, why do you want to be a PA? Uh, <laughs> but I want to do something else. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. I'll ask one of my common ones. Those of you that have done a mock interview with me, you've probably got this one because it's such a good question. So I'll just, I'll share it. Ooh, I'm a little, uh, little nervous. <laughs> oh man, you should be because your future <laughs> depends on this interview, right? Uh, yes. No, real talk guys. It's, it's fine to be nervous in your interview. You should be, you know, it, it matters a lot. Uh, but anyway, okay. So applicants, Elijah, after reviewing your CASPA application, and seeing your substandard GPA uh, and your tremendous experience as a EMT. Uh, I wanted to ask you is, as an EMT, was there ever a time when you had to deal with a very difficult patient? Oh yeah, um, I'd say every day when I was working in the ER, um, you have to have a lot of patience for, for that job and not even just the ER, but any sort of healthcare job uh, in general. Um, one specific time, and I think of one specific time, but this is basically every day in the ER, you have to have a lot of patients. Um, we had a patient, patient's family member who, uh, you know, was really just concerned about, you know, their family member, the patient, um, and they were asking a lot of things, and it was kind of a busy day in the ER. We, yeah, we're like a level one trauma center, so we would see a lot of patients. We'd, we would have a lot of traffic and flow coming in and out of our ER, um, and it just feels like you don't have enough time to interact with patients or their family. And you're kind of just like in and out of the rooms, kind of got, got to just do what you got to do and then leave the room. Uh, but this family member kept, uh, you know, she could tell that I was like, getting frazzled because, um, because I'm obviously like looking like I'm rushing, but that's kind of like, kind of like my normal workflow. So mm -hmm. she was kind of like, I don't want to say pestering, but she was, um, just concerned, just overly concerned for, you know, her family member that was in the ER with us. Um, so I, I really had to like, you know, take a step back and be like, uh, and really reflect on the whole situation. Like I couldn't see it at face value, like, oh, this patient's family member just nagging me. Um, I really had to um, display my patience, um, you know, cause we're all there to help out these patients. We're all there as healthcare workers, we're there to be there not only for the patients but also for their family members so i found out that as i worked more and more in the er if i took more time and i didn't seem like i was rushing or if i slowed down the way i was talking putting things in layman's term and explaining it to the patient or their family members i found that interactions would go a lot smoother um so that would be an example of a difficult time i had uh but i did find a way to deal with it and you know use it to my advantage to have better patient interactions and better family interactions. Oops, sorry, just smack my iPad. <laughs> All right, guys. So kind of pause the video now, maybe rewind and see what you think before I give any kind of feedback. And then before I ask Elijah for his own feedback. Uh, so pause the video now. Think about what Elijah just said. What was good? What was bad? What could have been done better? What was excellent? 
you know, take a few seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, my turn. So uh, praise and polish. We did this in PA school all the time. Praise what you did well, polish what you did poorly. Praise, I really liked that he turned a negative into a positive. That's kind of the whole object of this question is like, are you going to be negative? Are you going to be like kind of blaming the patient or blaming the professor or blaming whomever for your poor performance or your poor experience? Or are you going to take all the responsibility upon yourself and turn it into a positive? Mm -hmm. So he very, very much did that. He's like, yeah, this patient's uh, family member was kind of pestering. She was kind of making my life, my job difficult. But I found that if I slow down and explain things to them and make them more comfortable, that things go smoother, which is exactly what anybody would want, right, in that situation. So I think Elijah did that fantastically well. Um, Thank what you. Did well <laughs> is it, it took a while to get to that point. It was a lot of kind of beating around the bush, which I think he was doing to think of an answer. Yes, <laughs> yes. I do, I do that. I do that. It's my technique. But <laughs> it's better than sitting there silently, though. Yeah. You know, so it's it's better than just like sitting there awkwardly or freezing. He just kind of like chatted and talked and he was pleasant. And then he came up with an answer. Yeah, uh, I'm a chatterbox. <laughs> <laughs> so it works. You just, you went in circles a few times and the, you said patience and patience mm -hmm. a bunch of times and it was getting confusing. And I was like, kind of kind of lost a little bit. Uh, but overall, like eight out of 10, nine out of 10 answer because it was so positive. It came to a good place. Yeah. So. And I kind of just. I had to reiterate the everything at the end, kind of like bring it to a conclusion because I don't, it sounded like I was just rambling at one point, like you said, which is why I kind of tied it in at the end. And I said, yep. And that's, you know, that is the kind of interaction that I had in the ER and how mm -hmm. I overcame it. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, I think you brought it home. You did a good job. In the beginning, I was kind of like, oh man, this is going to be rough. And then it turned into a really good answer. So, <laughs> cool. I start off slow. Okay. <laughs> hey, I mean, we all, we've all been there. So no, that, that was a, overall, it, it turned out to be a good answer, I think. Thank you. All right, here we go. I haven't interviewed for anything in like a very long time, so I can't wait for this. <laughs> oh, it's my turn to ask you something. Yeah, why not? Okay. Mr. Boris Temkin from however many years ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> from a long time ago. <laughs> um, so we've reviewed your application. You look like a solid applicant. Um, there are a couple things that you know, come to mind, um, considering your background and your low GPA in the past, obviously you've overcame it. How do you feel like, um, your post back and your past experiences will help you succeed in PA school? I think that's a really good question. And I feel like if I was in your shoes, I'd be equally concerned about my 2.9 GPA in college. And, uh, it's probably a pretty common thing you hear, but I gotta be honest with you. I just, I didn't really take college seriously. I knew I was kind of pre-med, like every other biology major, right? Everyone's freaking pre-med, right? Uh, but so I just, I didn't really take it seriously. I knew that I wanted to just get the gist. And if I felt like I got the gist and I could probably pass the exam with a C or a B, then, you know, that's, that's all you need, right? And then, of course, I discovered how competitive PA school was once I decided I wanted to be one. And I realized the gist is not enough. You need everything. You need to know every single thing at the very least, because communication barriers will always push that 100% down to a 90%. Uh, so I just, I realized that I needed to work much harder and be much more motivated as a student. Uh, and I only figured that out in post back. So uh, the higher standards for myself and for what I can do and accomplish definitely came from the military, from the Navy. Uh, there was some dramatic failures, particularly a Pentagon ceremony. I was. Uh, I was one of the leaders of the United States Navy ceremonial guard where I organized uh, where people went and how many people and what uniforms they brought. So I sent this whole platoon of sailors in with practice uniforms when they should have had their ceremonial uniforms. So this entire international ceremony at the Pentagon did not involve the U.S. Navy that one day because of my screw up. Um, and I got reamed out mercilessly for it. And since that day, my attention de to detail has been on point, on point <laughs> for everything I do. Uh, so that, that's kind of when everything turned around. It was one, that one very dramatic point in my life. And then once I finally got to post back, uh, I realized this was now or never. You're going to learn how to study. You're going to learn how to get good grades or you're not. And so I did everything I could. I watched every YouTube video out there on study skills. I typed in how I learned everything in med school and PA school and just watched all those videos. Tried everything. Got mild carpal tunnel from writing everything by hand. Figured out that wasn't going to work. 
Uh, but I tried everything over and over again and finally got the study strategies to work. And you saw the results kind of speak for themselves. Um, so I have more study skills now. I have more confidence in myself now. But I think the most important thing is my attention to detail, the seriousness with which I take every task, and also uh, my adaptability because I realize PA school is going to be tremendously difficult. What I've done in the past won't work maybe, and I'm ready to adapt and try new things and do everything it takes to work and uh, to make it happen. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll give the viewers a time to pause the video and just reflect on what you said. So what is Take a few seconds, guys. Soak it in. One, two, three, and there it is. <laughs> uh, what would you call it? Polish and praise? Praise and polish. Praise and polish. Polish and praise, yeah. Constructive criticism. Got it. Um, what I really like... Um, about your answer was that you answered basically everything I asked for. Um, you gave like adequate evidence to back it up. Uh, I love how like you take, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Accountability for, you know, the, your past and your low GPA and your failures even in the military and how you were able to turn those into positives. That's kind of like what we talked about in my answer as well, right? And you, you did it the same way here is you took negatives and turned it into a positive, which will propel you through PA school. And you kind of, mm -hmm. you, you seem confident in yourself and like the way you answered, um, I feel like no one would disagree with you that you've been through a lot just by looking at your application and uh, the authority you have in your voice, I think uh, is really what stood out to me. Um, Polish, I don't know. I mean, I guess it was a little storytelling, but I... Personally, for me as an interviewer, I like that. I like more details. Um, I don't, well, I don't know the time constraints of an interview, uh, of a normal interview, but I, I do like it. Um, but I feel like you would say that about yourself uh, if you were to rewatch that for us, that you were kind of getting into, I guess, too much detail mm -hmm. where you could have like layman's termed a little bit more on the military side. Uh, but I feel like those details are necessary for you to tell that story. So, I mean, that's really all I have to say about it, but I, I really love your answer. You think it was a little long-winded? A little bit, but I did ask a long-winded question. I asked like a multi-tiered question, so mm -hmm. it, it, you have to kind of answer it like respectively. Gotcha. Yeah, that could have probably been a little quicker, a little more to the point. I thought you were going to say, because I almost swore, I said freaking. I was about to say. Okay, I, I did notice that, but because my personality is an interviewer, so you kind of have to gauge who your interviewers are if like right. that's something they'll – you know, jive with. I mean, I, I think I teared up a little in mine. I don't know. It just depends on who's interviewing you. Okay. Uh, I don't. Some interviewers may be like, "Man, what the heck is this guy doing?" <laughs> this guy <cries. laughs> Right. But well, I guess it resonated. I don't know. Actually, so I actually, uh, you guys heard it here first. I interviewed the program director of Elijah's program, actually, Dr. El Dr. Palfreyman. Yes. And that was last week. I'm gonna edit the video. I'm gonna post it probably in the next few weeks. But she actually specifically talked about these two things. She specifically talked about swearing during the interview. And she specifically talked about tearing up during the interview. She said <laughs> tearing up is totally okay, especially when talking about personal topics. And swearing is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got it. That's why they let it slide. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a good thing when you're talking about personal topics. It shows you're human. Um, swearing during the interview is not okay. So, Imagine uh, they have those check boxes like on their forms like swearing yes no or yeah. crying yes no oh, I, don't think they have. Cry. <laughs> I really don't think they have any of that <laughs> Is real no 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 i'm no, just, just being corny <laughs> the applicant cried check yes. <laughs> so plus tense, plus tense good <laughs> um yeah, but no, that was that was definitely my fault. I should have been zoned in and more professional and not sworn at all. So ma major screw up on my part. Do not let that happen. Be more professional. Be more buttoned up. Even if you're very confident and you're ready, these are not your buddies. These are the people deciding your fate. Okay, so be professional. Don't swear. Don't even say freaking. Uh, so that was stupid on my part. Uh, but anyway, okay. So decent, decent questions, decent answers from both, even though mine potentially would have gotten me disqualified. Uh, by the <laughs> absolute wrong interviewer, so it's possible. Um, Probably. Yeah, literally. There's, yeah. But anyway, uh, one more question each. And we'll yeah. wrap up here. Ooh, uh, nervous again. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I cry. I interviewed in so long. 
<laughs> yeah, right? It's, it's it's not, uh, like I should probably be more professional. Uh, okay, so I asked you about that one, and I don't remember what else I was going to ask you. That's okay. Oh, no. Okay, so this is a good one. This okay. is a good one. Oh, God. Okay. Right. So, Elijah, you're obviously a very competitive applicant. You've had thousands of hours as an EMT, which is a great form of uh, patient care experience. Your master's degree, you had very high grades. You're obviously a capable applicant with his choice of PA programs. Why did you choose our program? So, initially... I didn't really have a choice in applying to certain programs. I didn't have the GPA that catered to, you know, a lot of the programs that were closer to me in Arizona. Um, they had a hard cutoff at 3.0, um, and I just did not meet those requirements. So I had to apply very strategically. Um, it was a lot of heartaches, a lot of hours researching. Um, I really had to dial in and make, oh my goodness, I wish I could show you guys my Excel sheet, but I had this huge Excel sheet that has so many red boxes because I couldn't apply to those schools because of GPA min. Um, but Rutgers fell into that, um, that category of schools that were more holistic in their approach. Um, so those were kind of the schools I was going for, ones that would look past my undergrad GPA and would look at me uh, with regards to my PCE, my volunteering, uh, my post back and my upward trend. Um, and what really made me fall in love with your guys' program is the fact that you extended an interview to me, um, no other program gave me an interview. Um, I technically didn't have a number one because I didn't have a choice in where to apply. I really applied to who would take me. Um, but now I can, you know, solidly and firmly say that Rutgers is my number one because you guys obviously have seen past all my past failures and, you know, believe in me, which in turn helped me believe in myself because I thought I couldn't even get an interview this cycle. But the fact that you guys believed in me enough to offer me this interview, I'm just so grateful, so thankful. And yeah, um, that's why I chose you guys' program. You guys are awesome. You know, Thank you for having me. Uh, and I'm assuming this is like one of the last questions more, so I'm just gonna end it there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, it definitely definitely is, tier. Oh yeah, that, that, that's when the tier came down. Yeah. yeah. They asked me that same exact answer question and that yeah. is kind of when the tear came down at the end of that i mean who's gonna say no to that <laughs> right I mean, like that's the most genuine response ever so praise obviously super genuine very very honest you weren't like bullshitting like oh yeah i, I got 10 interviews and this one is, seems fine blah 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 like <laughs> no like it was very very genuine that was definitely the praise and obviously it's what landed you the spot in the class uh the pile issues you didn't really talk about the program right right you know, it was just like, you guys were the only ones that gave me a shot. That's why. Which is well, a like, valid uh, answer. It's true. Like with regards to their like, like mission, like statements and like yeah. values. Yeah. yeah, like the mission, the values, um, the, the clinic that they run. Right. Okay. The clinic. Oh, you know about that. <laughs> well, yeah, I just interviewed your program director. Right. <laughs> which is exactly stuff that she talked about. That's why I wanted to bring up this question. Mm -hmm. Because she said, you know, like you write your CASPA personal statement kind of generalist because you're applying to multiple, but mm -hmm. then where you really want to shine is in your interview where you say like program specific stuff that it shows that you've researched the program and that, you know, that you were really interested in it. Yeah. I think I kind of took a different take on it. Um, yeah. I think I, I went for the emotional approach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it couldn't hurt to do both, but obviously what you did work. So, I mean, no, no shade on that. Right. I think what I could have done is, I think at first, if I was going to have like a two-parter to that was talk about, like you said, probably something with regards like specific to the program that I personally like, mm -hmm. which I think I did mention. I, I said the holistic approach because they do take that approach, but nothing. Right. You're right. I didn't mention the Hope Clinic or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then I probably could have ended with that, the, the tearjerker. Yeah. Because <laughs> that way at least, so there, there's like two kinds of people. There's like the caring, empathetic types. Mm -hmm. I like want to be everyone's mom. And then there's the ones that are like, they follow a list. They are very logical. If this is not on the list, he must fail. And it's like, some people are looking for, okay, did you research the school? Did you say one of these five things that's unique about our school or not? Mm -hmm. You didn't. Okay. That's an automatic, you know, X. Uh, so if you happen to be unlucky and got one of those interviewers that could have gone badly for you. Um, and I just want to mention something that is a little bit strategic and this comes with just interview experience. Mm -hmm. I kind of, uh, went for that kind of answer not for one because it's um 
it's what stood out to me the most and it's it really mm -hmm. like helped to define my experience but also i knew that one of the interviewers uh was like you said more of the empathetic type so mm -hmm. and i saw her resonate well with that statement after so i was like oh that, that was the perfect thing for me to say that yeah so you gotta yeah. be strategic in a way yeah read the room definitely mm -hmm. who you're interviewing with um but in this case, like it would have been good to do both, like check the box, yes. talk about the unique thing because you know that's the right answer, and then really mm -hmm. lay it on them and make them basically say it's impossible to say no to this kid. Uh, so yeah. I'm writing that down in my notes, Boris. <laughs> there you go. Um, I mean, you're already in. You're good. But everybody else out there, take notes. That's you should probably do both. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's do one more question for me, and then I think that'll be it. Okay, one more. Um, I am gonna kind of do the one we talked about before something similar um so it's like a, like we need a weird one you know oh yeah okay so um let's see if you could have dinner with any person in history for one night what would you eat for that dinner mm -hmm. and why would you choose that person oh that's a good question uh, and that's such a tough one especially for someone who reads and you know likes movies and stuff because there's so many different actors and different like historical figures mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's a really tough question to answer because there's so many um but i think if i had to pick one just probably recently because I, I recently finished his biography it would be steve jobs mm -hmm. uh and actually another thing that makes this question hard is if you know anything about steve jobs uh he has very particular diet habits he was a fruitarian so he ate nothing but like apples and oranges for a, a number of years and he was like strictly vegan. So I'm not really sure what we'd have for dinner. I got to be honest with you. I would probably order something vegan just to be like respectful to him. Uh, and I don't know if he would even order anything because he was famous for sending food back. But anyway, uh, so why Steve Jobs? Because he was one of the most innovative minds in the world. And he had, he's kind of this like Jekyll and Hyde character where he's like, he's very, very brash and he really angered a lot of people. But at the same time, he was so brilliant and collaborated with enough people to build like the most iconic brand, the first trillion dollar company. Uh, what does that have to do with medicine? Maybe not a whole lot, but just people who are unique, who change the world, I think are tremendously interesting. And, you know, one sentence that they say can probably change my life for the better more than reading, you know, 10 books, you know? Uh, so just being around people that are very, very successful, even for a few minutes is, is very powerful. I think for me, uh, I got to be honest with you guys, I'm struggling to relate this to the whole PA profession, but I guess I would say that it's all about growing and learning. That's probably why I like the PA profession more than any other in medicine is because we are constantly collaborative. We're constantly learning more and more. And if you feel like you've kind of learned enough, at least at the PA role in one specialty, you switch and then you learn a whole new thing. And within two or three of these switches, you're this extremely holistic provider that can really help your community, which is what I want to be. Uh, so I think that whole like ever evolving, ever changing, growing and becoming a better version of yourself thing is consistent with picking Steve Jobs because he did that constantly to a fault even. So I'd pick Steve Jobs. What we would eat, I have no idea. <laughs> I, okay, pause video, pause the video. Why? And then, oh, no, no, the, the, uh, reflection time, right? And then one, two, three. Oh, oh, I was like, yeah. wait, was the recording? No, 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 don't pause it. I was like, what that are you going to say? That something. was a great answer. Um, so I I actually, like, I know you're kind of struggling a bit at the end there, but I actually love the direction you took with that. You you said Steve Jobs, which um, you're right. Like, there's he's, like, not related to medicine at all. But I like the all. fact that you mentioned, like, oh, uh, I would eat a vegan meal, right? Because, like, you're kind of right. catering to him. You're kind of, like, being empathetic. Uh, putting yourself in his shoes, which I like. And then I don't even know how, but you related it to medicine and like his, um, like you related like a lot of his aspects to medicine. And you obviously shown that, you know, a lot about Steve Jobs and that you were just like seeing a random person and have nothing to back it up with. Like you mm -hmm. gave like specific concrete details on why you chose him, why you found out, why you thought he was interesting. And then you even tied it back into medicine, which I didn't expect you to do, which I think that's a, you did, that was a great answer. I know it's a hard one because it's kind of one of those ones that, you know, it's like a curveball. Like you, you just don't expect those kind of questions to be asked. But the way Boris kind of, you know, did such an impromptu answer like that, like I, 
that was really good. And you kind of just have to find your own style um, uh, with your interviewers and, you know, whatever vibes with them. Like, you kind of have to applicate your answer to, you know, how they are. Yeah. I definitely froze in the middle. You did. But I did. I think I recovered well, well, but it definitely wasn't like a streamlined, perfect answer in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Um, but you guys can do that. Like I always say, like you can ask for five seconds to think or whatever, like, Hey, uh, can I, that's a really good question. Can I gather my thoughts just for a couple seconds? Mm -hmm. You can do that in the middle of a question, just like I literally just did. Like, I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm struggling to find a way to like re to relate this to medicine, but I want to. And then I just kind of kept BSing for another few seconds. And then I had it mm -hmm. just like Elijah in the beginning. He just kind of chatted and chatted until he had his answer. And then he had the perfect answer. Then, I stream, yeah, then you just got to streamline towards that. Yeah. So it's okay to do that. You know, the whole answer doesn't have to be perfect as long as it lands in the right place. Uh, so yeah, was it perfect? I, no. Was it solid? Yeah. I'd say eight out of 10. Um, I mean, they're, they're probably going to see even worse, like slip ups than what you did. I honestly thought you're like, you recovered well. It's not about how you slipped up because everyone's going to slip up with that kind of question. It's how sure. you bounce back and recover. And I thought you did that very well. Recovery, 10 out of 10. Um, overall <laughs> answer, I'd average to like 8 out of 10. Okay. I liked it a lot. Yeah, that's actually. not bad. And it's funny because I would see your Instagram post about you posting about that book. That's uh -huh. And I'm yep. like, oh, I know where he's going with this. <laughs> I mean, the, the last one I read was Elon Musk, but he's controversial. That's another thing is don't say anything controversial. Yes. You know? That, that too. That too. Like whatever side of any political statement you're on, just for God's sake, just leave it out of your interview. You have no <laughs> idea what side your, your people are going to be on. Oh, yeah. Just you know? um, stay on the fence. <laughs> yeah, stay. Exactly. Stay on the fence. Don't, <laughs> right on the fence. Like, don't hop off at all. Like nothing political whatsoever. Just um, a little bit of a uh, brainstorming things because those answers do tend to trip people or those kind of questions do tend to trip people up. Uh, mm -hmm. Me and Boris were kind of discussing it earlier. Uh, another example one would be, uh, what is your favorite color and why? You know, that's very short and sweet. Um, another one I think I asked Boris earlier was, uh, if you could bring three things to an island, what would it be and why? You know, mm -hmm. things like that. So just be prepared because you never know who your interviewers are and if they're going to ask some sort of like left field question like that. So... Well, and what might make people nervous is how do you prepare for something like that? You don't. You have, it shows that you have to be good with words on the spot and that you know how to talk. You can practice that. Mm -hmm. You can literally practice that. It's like warming up socially or whatever. You can totally do that. Mm -hmm. And I hate to like keep giving you guys homework, but literally the thing that's going to set you apart from every other interviewer is how much you practice and how much you prepare. So what you could do is get a bunch of like pre-PA questions. There's thousands of them online and answer those but it, what else you could do for these really random ones and just to be more kind of calibrated socially is literally i'm looking out the window right now pick four things and just talk for one minute about each one of them just whatever comes to mind whatever comes to mind it doesn't matter if, if it's going to be something weird make sure you're alone but just whatever comes to mind just practice free forming like i see leaves like there's literally if you i don't know if you see my window but there's leaves I, so, I see it. <laughs> I had to flip it upside down. But so I'm literally staring at the first thing you see, leaves. Leaves are green. Why are they green? Because of chlorophyll. That's a pretty long word. You know what else is a long word? Onomatopoeia. I actually forgot what it means, but like we had all these really random like grammar words in English back in like second grade. And what made it harder to be in second grade was that not only do you have to learn the concept, but now you have to learn the stupid word that's impossible to learn anyway. So man, second grade was really hard for me. Was second grade hard for you? Because I feel like it was harder for me than for a lot of people, probably because I didn't speak English. That certainly makes things hard. And you just bullshit for, for like a minute. Oh, yeah. Just practice that. It, it, you oh, may, yeah. It'll probably like feel stupid to do that, but just practice. And you'll just get so much better at just talking randomly. I mean, I, I support that because before, uh, when I was driving to and from work in the mm -hmm. car, I would, okay, it's probably not the safest to do while you're driving. Maybe <laughs> sit down somewhere because I would visualize like in my head, like, okay, I have an interview in front of me. I'm mm -hmm. going to talk out loud. I'm going to answer the, oh, what are you, what are some weaknesses and strengths? Like, you know, like really yeah. basic questions. And I would, <clears throat> I would talk out loud in the car and like just practice like how I'm going to say it, um, yeah. what different answers I could, I could give. Um, because you have to really try to mentally put yourself in those positions. Because if you're, if you don't practice, like Boris said, if you don't practice putting yourself in those pressure positions uh, and like, applying some pressure then 
when you're actually there and doing it, you're gonna you're gonna feel shaky. You're, you're gonna see your hands shake. Yeah, your voice is gonna sound shaky. Uh, but if you've obviously practiced it enough and put yourself in those situations, whether or not it's by yourself or ask someone to interview you, um, if you've done it enough, it will show when you actually go to an interview. Yeah, and they won't even know why. They'll just be like, "Wow, this person is confident. Mm -hmm. We like that." Yep. Yeah, it's just it's good. They won't ask how. They won't be like, "Oh, so were you like maybe driving unsafely and talking to yourself in the car?" <laughs> no one's gonna say that. <laughs> are, are you talking to yourself in your room, staring out the window? No one's going to say that. They're just going to be like, hey, this person's confident. Yep. Yeah. So practice, practice, practice. <laughs> I had no idea you did that. I did the same thing like before my first or my, my second interview. Uh, I just sat there in the room by myself with like a list of note cards with questions I had written down. Yep. Literally had two chairs, sat in one chair, asked the question, got up, went to the other chair and answered the question. Like did that like all night. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it worked out. It, worked right? out. it, it worked shows. Out. I mean, look at how we're interviewing now. I mean, we didn't even prepare for this. We're kind of just doing it right off the yeah. top of the line. Yeah. I mean, it, it probably helps that, like, one, you're in PA school, so you have, like, a tremendous amount of social interaction, and you're doing mock, uh, like, patient scenarios. Oh, yeah. And all that stuff. And I'm actually interacting with patients and a freaking YouTuber. Like, so it's kind of unfair for us. Like, we have a, a lot of experience doing this stuff on the spot. Uh, but, you know, that, that doesn't mean you out there can't also practice or can't also go be like super social before your interviewer and just be like less nervous. Because the worst thing you can do is sit there in your room by yourself and just listen to stuff and passively absorb stuff. Yeah. The worst thing you can do is watch this video and do nothing else. The best thing you can do is watch this video and go practice the stuff that we're talking about. And then, you know, your interview is going to go much better. I completely agree with that. Yeah. So yeah, there you have it. There's four like eight out of ten answers. Average. <laughs> On average. I'd say average. It's a good average. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that was helpful, guys. Uh, like I said, definitely look out for Dr. Palfreyman's uh, interview dropping sometime soon. That's going to be tremendously beneficial for you guys. Two and a half hours. This wow. very like important program director of one of the top ten PA schools in the country sat down and answer questions for you guys. So definitely don't miss that one. You got any questions for me or Elijah? Post them below or just email one of us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. See you guys. Thank you. Stop the recording here. Oh, sorry. Elijah was signing off. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> End recording.